Concerning results are coming out of a recent study leaking Alzheimer's and a popular menopausal hormone therapy. Harvard researchers say women who took hormone replacement therapy in their 60s were found to have a higher risk of dementia in their 70s. Joining me now, I have board certified neurologist Dr. Tom Pitts. Dr. Pitts, it's been a while. It's good to see you again. Hey, it's great to be back on. Thank you for having me, Marky. Talk about an alarming story, though. I mean, so many women take hormone replacement therapy in menopause. Do you agree with this study? You know, I do. This really highlights the importance. It's a conversation that I haven't had many patients tell me they've had in depth. Uh, it's the critical timing window. That's what this is really highlighting. It's not that hormonal replacement therapy does not have a role after menopause. It's really when you start it, actually. If you were to start hormonal replacement therapy, remember, there is no hormonal replacement therapy. There's many types. There's transdermal, estrogen only, estrogen with progesterone. We're mainly talking about oral estrogen. If you start it shortly after menopause, let's say in your 50s, five to 10 years after menopause, you tend to actually be protected against Alzheimer's, right? So that's what makes this complicated. If you start it early, you are protected against Alzheimer's. So it's if just the people started, who start it too late. Yes, that's the problem. If you start it at 60, and, and remember, I'm not talking about taking it at 50 through 60. If you go like 10 years or so without estrogen replacement, and then you start it at 60, you actually increase your risk of Alzheimer's. And why is that? I mean, what's happening neurologically that makes that the case? Very complicated mechanisms, but basically the, the estrogen receptors become desensitized in the brain and they don't react the same. And the problem is, you know, when you're taking estrogen consistently, um, you stop developing the accumulation of these harmful plaques that we see in Alzheimer's, like uh, hyperphosphorylated tau protein or beta amyloid proteins. Um, they're protected by estrogen. When you stop them, they uh, when you stop estrogen or have menopause, you don't take it for a while. These uh, harmful proteins can accumulate, and then restarting estrogen can actually enhance their abnormal aggregation. Wow. I mean, who yeah. knew? I'm, I'm thinking right now of everybody watching this segment who's in their 60s, who may have just started HRTs, and they're thinking, okay, well, Dr. Pitts, what am I to do now? What, what's the game plan instead? All right, you got a game plan. There's all There are alternatives. Now, of okay. course, I mean, I hate that women are in, in this position. We've got to find a better way to do this because, you know, you have you have decisions to make before menopause. You have decisions to make about HRT. Some are helpful uh, against some cancers. Some are, hands, uh, are uh, uh, provocative for cancers. It's helpful for Alzheimer's early. It's harmful later. It's very difficult. Right now, the best thing to consider is talking to your doctor, reassessing every few years your risk of blood clot stroke, right, because that can also increase, and consider using maybe a low lower dose estrogen, transdermal, preferably like a gel or patch with progesterone. That tends to offset the Alzheimer's risk while hopefully taking care of those postmenopausal symptoms like hot flashes and things like that. Mm. I, I also, you know, we're in this new age where holistic remedies are more at the forefront than they've ever been. I mean, for women who want to navigate menopause and body changes, mental shifts, which I know that that's your forte, just as naturally as possible, what is your medical advice for those women? All right, always focusing on the pillars of health. Now, going specifically postmenopausal, there's one that I really like. There's actually data on this, Tai Chi. Tai Chi has not been shown to be exactly as effective for postmenopausal <laughs> symptoms uh, as hormone replace replacement therapy, but it does have evidence. It's better than not taking anything. Mindfulness, breathing, yoga, good sleep, low inflammatory diet, taking care of your cardiovascular comorbid conditions, taking care of blood sugar, um, you know, eating, cooking well, um, using, uh, trying to minimize medications that can enhance sympathetic drive or those those uh, stress hormones that can increase hot flashes and things like that. So you could look across the board at the pillars of health, at mental health, sleep, physical activity, and uh, I'm always a big fan of complementary therapies too that have evidence behind them like yeah. Tai Chi as well. Yeah. It's funny that you bring that up. I actually was walking past a woman yesterday in Lincoln Park here in Chicago who was doing Tai Chi. And I was like, she's probably on to something that I don't know about. And here we are. I'm talking with Way you. Way of the game. It probably made her feel better and, and generations before her. And then the evidence finally caught up to it. But Tai Chi, I mean, if you walk down here in New York City, you'll see entire groups of people under the FDR bridge doing Tai Chi. And it's, it's a beautiful art. It's very calming as mm -hmm. well. So it has that physical movement with kind of that 
uh, uh, mental harm, harmonious kind of feel. Usually you do it in a group and that can help with stress hormone release, blood pressure, autonomic function, heart rate, respiratory huh. rate, and help with some of those postmenopausal symptoms that your HRT is trying to deal with. Yeah, well, it looks... Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.